This video is going to explain the importance of keeping potassium at a safe level in your blood. It will show how cooking methods can lower the potassium content of foods and will give you an example of fruit and vegetable portion sizes. Potassium is a mineral involved in muscle movement and contraction. When kidney function is reduced, it will lose the ability to filter off the extra potassium in your blood. Consequently, the blood potassium level will go above normal. Not everyone with reduced kidney function has issues with potassium and it will depend on your blood results. Your target blood potassium range depends on whether you are having renal replacement therapy or not. Your need to follow a low potassium diet can change along your CKD journey. It's important to have as balanced and varied a diet as possible. A low potassium diet is defined as a diet containing 50 to 70 millimoles of potassium per day. This table shows the minimal amount of daily potassium intake from our staple diet. When blood potassium increases above the normal level, it can cause the muscles to contract in an abnormal way, which is called a cramp. As our heart is made of muscle, high blood potassium can cause irregular heartbeats. There are several causes of raised blood potassium levels. Dietary potassium intake is only one of them. When you have a raised potassium blood result, you may be asked to repeat a blood test to confirm that the reading was correct. If you are on certain blood pressure medications, diuretics or immunosuppressants, your doctor may advise you to adjust the dose or temporarily stop taking them. Metabolic causes of elevated blood potassium can be due to poor blood sugar control and acid-base imbalance. Your doctor may start you on a medication called sodium bicarbonate to neutralise your blood acidity and lower your blood potassium reading. Other causes of high blood potassium are dehydration, infection, weight loss, constipation and inadequate dialysis. Meanwhile, your doctor and specialist nurses will refer you to see a renal dietitian and find out how to modify your diet. Sometimes, simply changing your dietary potassium intake can improve your blood potassium within 2-3 to three days. If you are at risk of hyperkalemia, you are encouraged to follow the low potassium diet. Your renal dietitian will take a diet history from you to find out the portion sizes and frequency of certain food consumption. Based on the following, your dietitian will recommend you to modify your diet and change your cooking methods if needed. You will be encouraged to avoid some less nutritious high potassium food, such as chocolate, crisps, beer and chips. Fruit and vegetables are high in potassium, however, our body does not absorb potassium from them efficiently. Therefore, you don't need to completely stop eating some of your favourite fruit and vegetables. Your dietitian can advise you on the types of high potassium fruit and vegetables to avoid and give you further advice about frequency and portion sizes suitable for you. At the end of this video, we will show you what a portion of fruit should look like. It is difficult to give a precise answer to this question, as daily potassium allowance depends on your residual renal function. Residual renal function means how well your own kidneys manage to get rid of the waste products. As potassium is a mineral stored in the muscles, the amount of daily potassium allowance varies depending on the muscle mass of the individual. Generally speaking, the bigger the person, the more potassium is allowed. As a rule of thumb, the maximum daily potassium allowance for someone who has no urine output or very limited renal function will be calculated based on their ideal body weight like this. Potatoes are part of a staple diet in the UK. In order to reduce the potassium content of them, you are recommended to peel and cut them into smaller pieces. Then boil the potatoes in lots of water and strain, then add them into other cooking, such as stew, curry, shepherd's pie and samosa. Remember to discard the water after boiling the potato. You can cut them into chips, parboil them and then freeze for future use. Boiling the potatoes can significantly reduce the potassium content of them. Please be aware, 
Boiling too many potatoes in a small pot, or the whole potato in a small amount of water, are not efficient ways to reduce the potassium content of them. Other cooking methods, such as roasting, baking, deep frying, microwaving and steam cooking, will not remove the potassium from the potato. Potato powder, ready-made mashed potato and frozen products are all high in potassium. If you're going out for meals, you can try to choose rice, pasta and noodles or bread-based meals as they are lower in potassium content. Let's look at two meal plans and compare their potassium content. Breakfast, all bran cereal with milk and a tablespoonful of raisins, a cup of cappuccino and a banana. A glass of orange juice with a cereal bar containing nuts and dried fruit as a snack. Jacket potato with baked beans and a bowl of cream tomato soup for lunch. A packet of potato crisps with a cup of coffee for snack. A slice of steak with chips for dinner with rhubarb crumble and custard as dessert. A slice of melon for supper. The total potassium content of this diet is 187 millimoles. Let's look at another diet. Two Weetabix with milk, a cup of tea and a slice of toast with jam for breakfast. Two plain biscuits with diluted squash and an apple for snack. Macaroni cheese with salad and a glass of lemonade for lunch. A donut with a cup of tea for snack. Beef stew with parboiled potatoes and apple crumble with custard for dinner. And a slice of toast with jam for supper. The total potassium content of this diet is 62.7 millimoles. Tomatoes are high in potassium. You can have a few slices of tomato in your sandwich, three to four cherry tomatoes in your salad, or a plum-sized tomato occasionally. Please avoid tomato juice or cream tomato soup, as you may consume two to three tomatoes per serving. You can still use tin tomatoes in cooking, as long as per portion of your meal, you are consuming one plum-sized tomato only. If you are using tomato puree or paste, Please make sure you only use half a teaspoonful per individual portion. Please be aware, tomato ketchup contains potassium too. Other high potassium vegetables include spinach, mushrooms, okra and choy sum. A few leaves of spinach in salad are fine, but please avoid cooked spinach as you may overconsume potassium in a small portion. For mushrooms and choy sum, Please keep to the portion as you see here per meal. You are recommended to try tinned okra instead of fresh okra. Brussels sprouts, aubergine and sweet potato are all high in potassium. You are encouraged to eat them occasionally with portion sizes per meal shown here. Avocado and rhubarb should not be consumed regularly as they are high in potassium. You can still have some fresh vegetables. A small salad usually contains about 10 millimoles of potassium. Fruits are very good sources of vitamins and minerals. As long as your blood potassium is within target, you should keep at least one portion of fruit per day. Here are some examples of one portion of fruit. They all contain similar amounts of potassium. The easiest way to remember the portion size of a fruit is to imagine a portion of fruit as a small apple. Fruits which are high in potassium, such as oranges, watermelon, mango or grapes, per portion should look smaller than an apple. Please avoid dried fruit, fresh fruit juice and vegetable juice. Milk contains potassium too, but it is a good source of high quality protein and calcium. Usually, you are recommended to limit milk intake to half a pint a day. Remember, potassium content of full cream semi-skimmed and skimmed milk are very similar. Dried milk powder, evaporated milk, condensed milk and coffee mate all contain potassium. Over-the-counter milkshake supplements are usually high in potassium. If you need nutritional supplements, please contact your GP, renal consultants or specialist nurses to refer you to see a renal dietitian. You may also come across different kinds of milk substitutes. Potassium content of plant-based milks can vary between brands. 
they can range from 0.5 to 5.6 millimoles of potassium per 300 milliliters. You can discuss with your dietitian and decide whether they are beneficial for you. Coffee is high in potassium. Tea contains less potassium per cup. Cocoa, malted milk drinks, bovril and high juice are high in potassium. Alcohol such as beer, cider and wine are made from barley, apple and grapes. They all contain potassium. The general rule is the darker the beer, the higher the potassium content. Whiskey and spirits are low in potassium. Potassium additives are more bioavailable than potassium found in whole foods. Our bodies can absorb the potassium from the additive more efficiently than from the natural sources. That means food labelled reduced salt may be high in potassium. You are encouraged to choose less processed food and use a small amount of normal sea salt in cooking instead of using salt substitutes such as low salt. Chocolate is high in potassium. Please avoid excessive intake. You can try half-coated chocolate biscuits. Other snacks such as boiled sweets, mints, marshmallows, Turkish delight, popcorn and chewing gum are low in potassium. Here are some low potassium snack alternatives. Dietary potassium allowance depends on the blood potassium level. As mentioned before, many factors affect blood potassium level, such as reduction in appetite, vomiting and diarrhea, certain change of medication and starting renal replacement therapy. You may be advised to eat more or less potassium rich food depending on your blood results. Your renal dietitian will advise you when and how to adjust your intake so as to keep your blood potassium within the normal range. If you would like further information about traditional diets, please contact your dietitian.